Chicago after a 2-0 and weekend for the Grizzlies. They come back down 13 last night to beat the Suns in Phoenix, shorthanded with Ja Morant on the bench in a sling, which was less than ideal. Uh, but on Friday, he was out there when the Grizzlies beat the Lakers 127-113. to And I am daring to say that this weekend we had the most fun Grizzlies win of the season so far, and that would be the Lakers win. And then we had the most impressive Grizzlies win of the season, which was last night's shorthanded win over the Suns. And I sat here on Friday and I begged and I pleaded for the Grizzlies to please score 120 points in a game. And we got it in back-to-back games, CJ. We got 120-plus. Offensively, they were hitting it, and it was wonderful to watch this team finally come out of a weekend 2-0, and and it just is the continued ups and downs, ebbs and flows of an NBA season. But we're sitting here on a Monday morning feeling much more confident about the Grizzlies and their quest to make it into a play-in tournament push after wins over the Lakers and the Suns. That Lakers game that Lakers- felt super intense like I felt yeah. way too intense for two teams who are what the Lakers and the Grizzlies are in the records uh record wise excuse me and it's because it had to feel that intense because both teams were desperate here we go with that desperation talk again Jessica they're desperate for wins right now and the Grizzlies on the road in LA with them playing desperate basketball the Lakers being to them they play de- desperate basketball of their own and Marcus Smart man he was just shooting the peel off the ball if you can get that don't think you can but if you can get that consistently from Marcus Smart look out this this grizzly team should be in contention for the play in and all you need to do is is get into the tournament the Lakers showed you that last year they went from playing to conference finals if you can just get in and get healthy at the right time you can make a push in the playoffs if you have the talent and I think the Grizzlies do have the talent yeah when you make the comment of can Marcus Smart do that regularly this is the first time in his career where he had back-to-back 25 plus point games so he hasn't done it historically at that clip but it did help the Grizzlies get through the weekend and I guess we'll go chronologically so starting with the game against the Lakers on Friday you saw them hit 23 threes 23 threes for this Grizzlies team that has struggled to shoot the three, has struggled to defend the three. The three-point line has not been the most fun place in the world for the Grizzlies this year. And they make 23 of them, and Marcus Smart took a lot of them. And the Lakers were leaving him wide open because he hasn't. By By design, design. because they haven't shot the ball well from three. And he was the one that they dared to shoot. And he makes them pay with eight of the threes. And it was the first time in franchise history that, you know, three Grizzlies players made five or more threes in the same game and it had the ESPN crew talking because this game was on national television and you're listening to the ESPN commentary and they're like, you know, if this Grizzlies team is healthy, they're a contender. And when they play the way they did against the Lakers on Friday, it is hard to argue that where you have Jaron Jackson Jr. 31 points, Marcus Smart 29 points, Desmond Bain 24 points along with a career high 13 assists, John Morant 21 points. That's 105 points from Jaron, Marcus Smart, Desmond Bain and John Morant. And that is a winning formula for this Grizzlies group. I will say Jaron Jackson Jr. probably just had the best weekend of his season. Like, he's been a monster. This is one of the best stretches for him. His game, especially offensively, has improved so much. He was Defensive Player of the Year last year, so you know what he's about on that side of the court. But he is finally realizing a little more consistently, and it's been back in overdrive these last two games, so many teams don't have an answer for his size, his mobility, and when he chooses – his physicality, and I thought that's what really stood out against the Lakers. Like, they do have an answer. It's Anthony Davis, but Jaron Jackson Jr. went at him aggressively and was able to get the edge on a player that historically he's struggled against. And now in these last two games, he has 58 points, 19 rebounds, 6 assists. He's made 12 of his last 21 attempts from 3. When he's getting double teamed, he's finding his teammates, and he's evolving as a playmaker, too. I thought Kevin Durant was super complimentary about Jaron Jackson Jr.'s game and, and his evolving game after that win last night against the Suns and giving him a lot of credit. That version of Jaron alongside Ja, Desmond Bain, Marcus Smart when he's like that and, and what Marcus Smart does defensively mixing it up. And we'll get into the Vince Williams Jr. and the Zaire of it all. Um, but I just thought Jaron was probably the most critical piece for them this weekend. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And it was... I, had to, I was looking up to see how many threes he made in that Lakers game. I think he was five for six from yeah. from three in that game and that's what makes Jaren so uh difficult to guard it is all right what are you going to take away and you don't usually have to take away the three with somebody Jaren's size you, you just don't 
You say, okay, we're going to take away his strong hand. The Suns were supposed to do that. They were supposed to make him go right instead of left last night. We'll talk more about that. They just couldn't do it. We're going to take away his strong hand, or we're going to push him off of the block. It's all things we're going to – Giannis Antetokounmpo, right? We're just not going to let him get downhill, or we're going to throw bodies at him when he gets downhill. Well, with Jaron, it is, all right, we got to guard him at the three. If we don't get out there, he can take and make three-point shots. But if we get out there, he can also go by you. He's gotten much, much better at going by people on the perimeter. And even there's a bit more of the change of direction dribble when he gets downhill. So often early on in his career, he'd get downhill and there was no ability to stop at all, no ability to go side to side at all. And it would sometimes lead him to overdrive, overpenetrate, and then take a heavily contested shot or get a turnover or get an offensive foul called or something like that. A, a negative play would come be the result. Well, now he can stop. Now he can change direction. He can be at the top of the key, shot fake, go left to dribble, go in between the legs, come back right, not all the way right, but just enough right to get by the defender and then go into a, a jump hook. His array of moves and the continued growth of Jaron off the dribble has been something that's been really, really encouraging this season, and we saw it on full display in both of those games. The Jessica Benson Show with C.J. Hurt, live every weekday at 8 a.m.